Hey y'all, it's your girl Beyonce Virgo. I'm here with another video for the series, Morticia the Mortician. And I'm here to talk about something that you guys have been asking me to talk about since I introduced the first video from the Morticia the Mortician series. So, oh, what have you guys been wanting to know? You guys have been wanting to know my experience the first time I embalmed. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna get right into it. So the first time I embalmed um, was actually very shortly after I started mortuary school. What boo? Camera ended up dying. Back to the story. So. I will always, like I said, I will always remember the first day I embalmed for the first time. Um, I remember it because the weather was so bad. It was snowing so super bad. E's car broke down that day and he was like waiting for me since the time I started embalming and, and embalming takes a while. Um, uh, also too, I'll get into that a little bit later, but the circumstances um, surrounding why the person I embalmed died and things about things like that. So I knew when I woke up that morning that it was going to be the first time I embalmed. Um, we, the way my school did it was we did it on teams. So there were teams of about um, maybe four or five, well, two of which I was like kind of um, cool with at the time. And um, we get there and I remember we were embalming, embalming with one of the instruct instructors who came to be one of my favorite proctors for embalming. She taught me so much and she's so super knowledgeable. The setup of the prep room, there's two tape there's two rooms, two embalming rooms, there's two tables in each room for decedents. So I wanna say we had about four cases that day, but I was in one room, half of my team was in one room with two decedents, and the other half of my team was in the other half of my team was in the other room uh, with the two other decedents and um this will always stick with me because um, the person that we embalmed was around my age or give or take a year or two, but it just was so powerful because um, yeah, you hear about people dying and people around your age dying for whatever reason, but it doesn't necessarily become real until you open that body bag and you see their body lying there like it just became my more my own mortality became so real to me like i always knew that okay anybody can die at any point in time but just something about seeing someone my age seeing someone that just reminded me of someone that could have that could be in my circle of friends or my circle of um of associates like it, it just it just my mortality and the mortality of everyone around me especially my boyfriends like it, it just it just hurt me so bad because um there were just so many things that I could connect to so many things that, that reminded me of people that I knew people that I know even the one the one girl that I was that was on my team made a comment that the person looked just like her partner and it's just like that's really weird because I was already thinking about my boyfriend you know because there's so many similarities there's so many like just anything can happen to any one of us especially growing up and living in like an urban community like there's so many things, unfortunate things that happen to people way before their time and that's just something that stuck with me. Um, so much so that I was contemplating going to their memorial, well not memorial service, but going to their funeral and going to their viewing. But I decided not to because I didn't want anyone to ask me how I knew them because I didn't know them. I just felt such a connection with them. But I decided not to go because I, 
that was just a really personal time and things like that and I, I just didn't want to I just didn't want to intrude I learned a lot from that case like I learned a whole lot I learned how to bomb an autopsy body uh, I'm thankful for the learning experience but I'm also that is just like I said is something that will always stick with me always and forever I will always remember that person's face I will always remember, I'll just always, I'll just always remember that case in particular, obviously because it was my first one, but because I just felt such a connection because even though I didn't grow up in Pittsburgh, that's where I live now, where I went to school, even though I didn't grow up here, um, I can just make the connection because I've lost people that I've grown up with, or that I knew from the hood, unfortunately died in the same manner. and. I don't know, it's just really unfortunate that, you know, people, that people go before their time. And um, I, I, I don't really wanna go into to detail. I don't think that's my place to put out on YouTube. But I just wanted to let you guys know like my first time and how it made me feel. I was extremely anxious because I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know when, at my school, you you went into an embalming not knowing too much. You don't really know the person's name. You don't know, unless it was something really traumatic how they died, you don't necessarily know the circumstances surrounding their death either. So you really just kind of go in there blind. You don't know their age, unless it's something abnormal like uh, a younger person, like a teenager, which is something, another case that comes to mind that'll stick with me forever um kids are always the hardest kids are always the hardest or like really traumatic deaths really traumatic accidents or things like that but i remember during the process feeling really sad and feeling a lot of sorrow it was just emotionally a lot i can just sum it up into that it was a lot emotionally um but I do have a great, a wonderful support system. As a embalmer, as a funeral director, it is so super important to have support around you for times like this when you are met with a case that tugs at your heartstrings a little bit that you, not saying that you don't care about anyone else, but like some things affect you more than others and that's a fact, that's a whole fact because when we ha when we have 95 year old grandmas like you don't you feel bad because it's like okay a life you know someone lost their life someone died it's sad no matter what but at the same time it's it's just very different when you when you see someone your age it's just very different and everything comes full circle and at that moment is when I really learned to appreciate my life. I really started being grateful for the things that I have, being grateful for my life, my sanity, my safety, things like that. Like it, it just it just helped me help me appreciate way more than maybe what I used to appreciate. Like Beyonce said, of any day above ground is a blessing. Like because Somebody somewhere is not. Somebody somewhere did not wake up. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's my message to you guys. I'm not trying to get too deep and churchy on y'all, but appreciate, 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 appreciate the people that are in your life. Appreciate your life. And just appreciate the small things because in the blink of an eye, just like that, you think that that person woke up that, woke up that morning and knew that that was going to be their last day. They didn't. So it's just like, you, you really have to appreciate. And I, I started reflecting a whole lot and being just thankful for the things that I do have. So yeah, y'all, um, thank you so much for watching. As always, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you can see when I post a video because they're few and far between. I know, I know. Let me know what you guys would like to see next in the Morticia the Mortician series. And we can just keep this thing going, honey. All right? See you in my next video. Bye.